Hey everybody, Bohush here, the casual expert speaking for PhotodeoxPro.com. In this video, we want to unbox the brand new GoPro Hero 6 Black. Uh, this promises to be a pretty amazing camera. And uh, this just came out, which is kind of nuts because it's only a year ago that GoPro came out with the Hero 5. And uh, some people are sort of sniffing, saying that, well, it's because GoPro's in financial trouble, so they're pushing out a new camera. I don't know how true any of that is. Uh, but this camera promises to be really good. We, we did an unboxing last year of the 5, um, and at that time I was saying that the 5 was not that big of a jump from the 4. They shared the same sensor. The 5 added image stabilization, which was kind of nice, and it added, you know, some overall refinements, but I didn't think it was that critical of an update. It felt a little bit like a cashing in kind of camera. Whereas the 6 is a very well thought out, uh, whole, whole new approach to GoProing. Is that a word? GoProing. Um, there's a new processor in here, so there's a lot of new stuff going on. Before we crack into the box, though, let me talk through some of the specs that I've seen online, the same as you have. Uh, lots of people like to spiel a lot of specs, uh, but I want to tell you how uh, they'll impact my work. Uh, I'm a long time GoPro guy. Uh, I was one of the first guys to put GoPro on TV, uh, so I've been there since GoPro 1 all the way up to now, and I've been a big fan. So. Um, one of the things they're promising with this new processor is better image quality. Always good. Uh, that alone might be reason enough to upgrade the camera. GoPros have always had great image, uh, great image output, so if you can boost that, so much the better. They're also promising better image stabilization. Now, this is digital image stabilization. You know, it's not like in a nice pro camera where there are like physical things moving the sensor around, you know, to like keep that image nice and stable. So you do sacrifice some image quality. But again, because of this new video image processor, uh, it promises to be even better image stabilization. And of course, if you're shooting at like 4K or 2K and you're going to down res to 1080 for your output, you probably won't even see that loss in image quality, which is also pretty nice. Um, also, there are even more options in this camera of um, framing sizes. You know, one of the things with GoPro is there's kind of a visual footprint when you're using GoPro because everything has this kind of fisheye look to it. Uh, but they figured out a way to kind of crop into the sensor so that uh, you're using less and less of the big fisheye lens and you can have a more linear image if you want. The GoPro 6 also has more options for frame rates, specifically slow motion. The, uh, the GoPro 5 was kind of limited, especially when you're shooting 4K. Uh, but now, with the 6, you can get 60 frames a second at 4K. So that's uh, half speed. Or if you're shooting a 1080, you can actually shoot at 240 frames a second, which is eight times slower than real life. And that is when slow motion gets really evocative. Um, that's kind of one of the main things I use GoPros for, time lapsing and a slow motion. And they are great at that kind of thing. So having more options in that arena is kind of better for me. Uh, I've noticed that GoPro is also marketing this camera a little differently. Uh, you know, they, they're, they're still talking about it being a sports camera, but, but really they want it, it's like an experience camera, you know, and uh, you're recording things as you remember them. Uh, that's important to them, and they're, they're kind of marketing more as like a, a walk around kind of camera. Uh, they've improved the microphone a bunch, and uh, you can take it right into the water without needing a case. Because you don't have a case on it, the audio quality is better, you know, muffled, you know, like it always did in that, in that uh, clear plastic case. They're also heavily marketing this almost like it's a phone add-on. Which, which isn't nonsense. You know, lots of people, their dominant walk-around camera is the camera built into their phone. But with this guy, you can take risks with it, like getting it wet or throwing it around or strapping it on your head or whatever, which you can't really do with your phone. Uh, that's probably pretty smart, you know, the idea that this camera can go places where your phone can't. Part of the way they're pushing this kind of phone integration is that they've improved the app a lot. Um, in my work, the app was mostly used, uh, I, I mostly used it when I had the GoPro someplace I couldn't see the screen, you know, so I was using it kind of as a framing device. But there was so much lag between the, the camera and the phone, it wasn't a great way to monitor action. Um, but they're saying that that's improved. But also, like, connectivity is improved as far as speed. So the idea is you shoot something crazy with your GoPro, you can get it into your phone quicker. Another area they've improved their app is with the quick stories thing, which is an auto-editing 
you know, sort of montage maker. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if in the future they don't sell you packages of music and edits and stuff like that. So, so they really are working on this idea that you don't think of the GoPro as a separate camera, a separate task, something that you do later. You can really shoot an event, uh, shoot a moment, buzz it into your phone, and they even sell a little a little dongle that will let you read your SD card on your Apple Lightning uh, Apple Lightning phone or your uh, micro USB phone. Uh, so you can get the footage into your phone quickly, then use their Quick Stories app to uh, do a quick edit, pop that onto Facebook. So that that's a pretty significant move for them. Um, so it's interesting to think of this as a $500 phone accessory. <laughs> I'll also be looking for places where the camera is more suited to being a pro. Uh, you know, they've got uh, HDR in their still photos. Uh, they've got wider dynamic range in the video modes. Uh, I want to see how this footage grades, you know, whether it's going to be kind of easier to get your own custom look on there. Um, and look, it's still a great tool for time lapse. I love the built in screen that they kind of rolled out with GoPro 5. I think that's a great way to control the camera. I think it's a great way to frame the camera with the uh, app being used more for like starting and stopping the camera remotely. That's kind of how I use it. And um, oh, it's got that voice control. People like the voice control. I, I sort of look at that as a novelty, but again, when this thing is at the end of a crane or up a tree, it is nice to be able to kind of scream at it and know that it's taking the shot. Okay, with no further ado, let's unbox this camera and then we're also going to make sure that it works with all the great GoTuff GoPro gear that we've got for you. Now traditionally, it's hard to get this middle part out, but I see like a little tear-off strip on the bottom, so it only took them, you know, six years to figure this out. But okay, let's tear the tear-off strip, open it up like so. You know, companies are way into the unboxing experience now, so I'm I'm I've, I'm I'm expecting like a huge life-changing experience here, and it starts with this hole. Okay, here we go. Oh oh, hey, the whole thing comes out. That's a switch. Normally, you have to tear this thing to pieces, and uh, I've said this before. I, I'm going to keep this plastic dome, even though I have no idea what it's for. Uh, it just seems so useful, I can't make myself throw it away. That's probably why my house looks like the way that it does, but, 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 enough about my personal problems. So let's see, here's the camera, it's mounted on, uh, you know, one of these uh, quick release clippy guys that we're used to. There's a little thing to remove here, let's remove the thing that says remove. And have it fling into my face, I believe I broke it, great. That's just for packing, so who cares. Um, oh, look, there are pictograms on how to remove it. Okay, so first, pop that rubber guy off. That's, this is a nice thing they added with, uh, with the last version of GoPro, uh, GoPro 5, I should say. It's so that no amount of vibration on the clip or pressure will unclip the camera until you flip that guy up. So that's pretty smart. So let's take that off. I will uh, get to that in a second. Let's take the, the screw out. There's that other piece I broke. Okay. So it comes inside its plastic sort of cage thing. This is again very similar to the 5, if not exactly identical to the 5. But there's the camera on its own. So without, and, and this is what I was mentioning before, uh, in, in GoPro's marketing, they're showing people just holding this camera and taking pictures with it, which uh, they never used to do. They always showed it mounted on your head or whatever. And the idea that you'd have this in your pocket or your handbag or something like that and just bust it out to take shots, that's kind of new. And I think a lot of what makes that realistic is that it's got that image stabilization. You know, uh, so, you know, your, your hand kind of jittering with excitement as you're looking at a spaceship exploding, like you'll be able to hand hold that. Plus, I forgot to mention this, one of the things they added with this camera is a digital zoom. I'm not a big fan of digital zoom, because just like on your phone, all it does is degrade the picture, because basically you're magnifying one area of the screen, and so you're sort of zooming into it, but really it's just taking those pixels and blooming them out, making them bigger. 
I'm sure that the new processor in here will do some kind of nice smoothing or something like that. Uh, I have found that if you have to digital, uh, if you have to zoom in digitally, I'd almost rather do it in post because I have better tools in my editing app to do that. But again, if this is something you're going to share very quickly, uh, maybe a zoom to get your audience's attention on the thing you want them to see, maybe it's worth the image quality loss. So it's a bit of a trade-off. Plus, don't forget, if you're shooting at higher resolution, like a 4K or a 2K or something like that, and you do a zoom, you're not going to see that image degradation if you're going to output it and share it at 1080, let's say. So that's another case where maybe digital zoom isn't the end of the world. Um, so it's got a, a, a thing of a skin diver on the back. I'm going to peel that off. Because, see, I'm, I love GoPro, but I don't live the GoPro lifestyle. I don't do anything crazy and daring with these. I just use, I use GoPros where I'd be afraid to wreck my camera. So really just being reminded of that with this skin diver just makes me kind of envious. But uh, there's the screen, touch screen of course. Yeah, this is the same, in fact, let me get out the five. Let's make sure that looks really the same. Yeah, that's identical. So the, the Hero 6, just like the five, has microphones all over. So again, it does a nicer job of uh, recording sound than uh, prior versions of the GoPro did. You can hook up an external microphone, which I do all the time. The only thing is you can't do it directly anymore. Um, you have to get a little adapter cable, and the adapter cable is stupid expensive. It's like 50 bucks, but it goes in the side here. This is where your uh, USB-C port is and your HDMI output is. Um, this little door is waterproof, but if you want, you can remove the door. You won't be waterproof anymore, but if the door's in your way, you can get rid of it. Uh, the GoPro can actually output a clean signal out of its HDMI port. So you won't see any of those overlays like the battery power or any of that kind of stuff. So if you want to avoid the massive compression that the GoPro's internal recorder uses to get all that video to fit on the card, you can actually run this out to an external recorder, which might seem nuts. And maybe it is a little bit nuts. But there have been times where I could fit this camera somewhere uh, but I really wanted to get a little bit of a better picture, you know, because I was going to do a lot of color grading later or something like that. So you can actually do that with this camera, which is pretty cool. Then on the uh, bottom is another little hatch, and that's where the uh, battery goes, and that's also where the SD card goes. This uses the same battery as the 5, so if you have invested in a bunch of 5 batteries, you're still good for the 6. And um, this lens assembly comes off with some difficulty, but the idea is if you smash the lens, you can replace it. Uh, they sell replacements on their own and they just kind of snap and screw in. I'm not going to do it because it's really hard, because uh, it's got to be sealed on there to remain watertight. Oh, and as I mentioned before, you can just take this right into the water. You don't need the external case. And you can go down to 33 feet, I believe. So um, good to go. It also means you can lose it in the water because this won't float. Um, let's see what comes in the actual box, okay? No instructions on how to open the box, though. Okay, I'll use this tab and take a chance. Aha, look. Okay, so there are the stickers. Everybody loves stickers. We've got, uh, oh, very simplified kind of uh, instructions here. They've also got this thing, the uh, you break it, will replace it guarantee. Uh, I have not had to take advantage of this, but that is pretty compelling because the whole point of the GoPro is to take the camera where cameras don't go. Um, so you might want to look into that. That's a pretty nutty guarantee that they've got. Okay. Also, uh, warnings in many languages. The full manual, annoyingly, is only available online as a PDF. Uh, so if you're on the road and you want to learn about this guy, you have to remember to download that PDF before you go out exploring. Uh, I wish it came with a paper manual. Okay. And in here is the battery. A uh, quick release clip with adhesive that's rounded to go onto a helmet. Quick release clip that's flat to go anywhere else. You also get a USB 3 cable with the USB C connector on the end, which is kind of the rounded, uh, rounded kind of connector. USB 3 is a lot faster than regular USB, so if your computer is equipped with it, that means you can upload and download through the camera very, very quickly. Basically, you don't even have to take the card out, you just connect this into the computer buzz that footage out of there. Um, it'll work with regular USB as well, doesn't matter. Um, 
Plus, you can power the camera this way. Uh, I do this a lot for long time lapses. Uh, if the time lapse is going to run more than a couple hours, I know the battery is not going to last that long. So you just plug this guy in and find some kind of external power source or a power brick, and then you can run this guy for a very long time. Okay, so that's what comes in the uh, the box. Oh, and uh, I always peel these off too. Uh, see if I can do it without wrecking everything. There we go. Uh, I usually grab these, drill some holes in the corner. This is e nice for mounting the camera somewhere or using gaffer tape to gaff tape this onto a surface, clip the camera in. So even though this seems like it might be garbage, I've actually found it to be pretty handy sometimes. Okay, so now here's the big question. Um, We've seen the accessories that come in the box. What about all the great accessories that Go Tough Gear makes? Do they still work with the GoPro Hero 6? Let's see. When you unpack the Hero 6, it comes in this plastic cage. And as I said before, uh, it does two things. It protects the camera, but you know, there are limits to how much it can protect the camera because it's just plastic, it's kind of thin. Uh, and it mainly gives you this GoPro for mounting to various accessories. But we've created a cage expressly for the 6 and the 5. It's called the shark cage. It's all aluminum, so this can really take a beating. Plus, uh, you've got these plates that you can mount wherever you want. Uh, these plates give you extra quarter 20 holes to mount more stuff. You can even mount a GoPro on the bottom, uh, or you can have plates down here if you're going to use this with a tripod. Basically, you configure this cage the way that you want, and it only takes a second to pop the camera inside. So let's take it out of its plastic cage, slide it into the all aluminum shark cage, like so. Okay, and nuzzles in there. You've got this single screw that has a pressure pad that snugs up against the camera to keep it from slipping out. And there you go, you're ready to go. So the camera's still waterproof, can still go in the drink with it. Uh, we've got this open on the side in case you, like me, uh, operate with the, uh, the USB open so you can power the camera or plug in a microphone. Or you can just put the door back on and again, take this into the water. And again, the main thing to remember is you can totally configure this however you want. And uh, you'll note we even have a little cutout here so you can still see the little LED so that when you're filming, you're filming yourself, you want to be able to see that blinking LED, you can see it right there in the corner. Uh, so that is the GoTuff Shark Cage for the GoPro Hero 6 and the GoPro Hero 5. Great way to protect it, uh, protect your camera, great way to make this even more versatile as far as ways you can mount it. To use our mounts, you'll need to put the little plastic cage back on. So let's do that. Let's pop that back on. Now this plastic cage offers some protection. I mean, it is plastic, right? But uh, at least it can take some of the bumps when you inevitably drop this tiny little camera. But its main purpose is to give you this, the, the thing I like to call the GoPro, which is what interfaces with, you know, their little system of these guys, right? But at GoTuff, we've got a bunch of different ones. Like we've got a lovely aluminum one, and that's our uh, tripod tripod adapter. We've also got an aluminum screw, and uh, the threading is built into the uh, into the tripod adapter, so you'll never lose it. Actually, all of our stuff has built-in threading, so there's no external uh, separate little nut to lose, which is kind of nice. So yeah, that works great with the uh, Hero Six. And these guys come in lots of different colors. So if you want to match your team or you want your GoPro to look different from everybody else's at a shoot, uh, this is a great way to customize stuff. And plus, it's, uh, it's all aluminum, so it's not going to get cracked up and beat up like plastic. Uh, also, we've got an extender arm. Now, one curious thing about GoPro extender arms, they no longer include one in the package, but their little extender arms turn the camera 90 degrees. Every time you add an arm, it turns the camera 90 degrees. Uh, sometimes that means when you add a couple extender arms, the camera's not facing the way that you want it to. So we've got extender arms. Let's see, let me start with these guys. That will turn the camera another 90 degrees. You know, so put it at the end of your last extender arm to turn the camera back the way you want to. Or we've got extender arms that go straight through. Okay, that's called, that's called the extender, and the one that turns it is called the extender 90 also available in aluminum. Then we've got the longer extender arm as well, made out of aluminum, so it's built to take a pounding. So let's, uh, let's create like a little setup here. We'll use screw number one like so. 
And in order to tighten that screw, we're going to use the Shark Bite, which is a wrench made expressly for GoPro screws. But on the other end, it has a bottle opener. So at the end of your shooting day, you can enjoy a cold one. Also notice that all of our GoTuff screws have an Allen head right inside there. So if you have just any old Allen wrench, you can just give it that last oomph if you need it to be really tight. Or like I said, shark bite wrench, a little more fun. Uh, let's see, let's add, um, let's add another extender. Let's just say we need another half inch for our setup here. Crank that in thusly. And again, I'll use the shark bite to do like that. And then on top, and we'll use the original plastic screw. Whoops. There you go. So with GoTuff gear, we have a lot of options to mount your GoPro of any vintage, you know, all the way back to GoPro 1. As long as it's got this little GoPro on there somewhere, uh, you can create your own setup and custom colors and all metal to, you know, take a beating. Uh, that stuff all still works with GoPro 6. And in fact, here I'll show you one of my favorite guys. I use this all the time. This is the mini tabletop tripod. And the idea here is it's a little tiny tripod, but when you fold up the legs, you'll note that the the legs are kind of bowed out, that's so it's a comfortable handle for run and gun kind of stuff. So you can screw this on the bottom, pop these legs open, adjust the head so your camera's aiming wherever you want it to. Plus there are even quarter 20 threads in the legs, so if you want to add a microphone or a light or a recorder or something like that, you can do that all in the tripod. Then we need to run to your next location. You can just grab that and do some shooting that way. So, a lot of cool stuff in the GoTuff gear collection. Let me show you a couple more things. When you take your GoPro out of the box, it comes pre-mounted to one of their quick-release buckles, and these are very cool, especially if you're using the camera in a couple different ways, like you want to be able to move it from being clipped onto a person to uh, you know, a clip that you've got kind of mounted somewhere. Uh, it's just a really nice way to take a camera and get it quickly from one location to another. Uh, so we created a quick-release clip um, compatible tripod mount, too. So if you've got, let's say, let's put this guy on here like so, and um, you know, you've got this mounted, let's say, on your helmet, and you want to move it to a tripod quickly because you want to do kind of an interview segment or take a look at the race or something like that. You can just keep this on a tripod and then just clip it in place like that, lock that rubber guy down, and uh, it's going to look good while it's supporting your camera. We also offer these quick release plates with holes pre-drilled, so you can mount this permanently somewhere. Uh, you can mount it onto anything wood or maybe even a surfboard, something like that. Uh, so we've tried to think of every conceivable way you might want to use your GoPro and where you'd want the uh, quick release to be really durable, to really, uh, you know, take advantage of being made out of metal. So I am really looking forward to plunging into the depths uh, not into the water, because again, I don't do sports, but uh, plunging into the depths of the camera and what it offers. Um, from what I can tell, this seems to be a worthwhile upgrade. Uh, even if you've got a five and you learn to love that guy, might want to move up into the six just to get all that extra image quality and that new image processor. I think that's going to be the main thing. Uh, so look for more videos where we investigate more stuff about the GoPro Hero 6, and uh, I'll show you lots of novel ways to get the most out of the GoPro. And um, if you've got questions, you should post them right here, because uh, as you can tell, I really love talking about the GoPro. To learn more about some of the GoTuff gear and accessories that we've been talking about, click on the link down below this video. You'll learn more about all these ways to mount and decorate and protect your Hero 6 camera and your other GoPros. And don't forget to click right here to subscribe. You can get more videos just like this one as we explore the GoPro Hero even more. My name's Bahush. Thanks for watching.